So first of all, I would like to thank a great team of the Functional Inorganic Materials Group, especially our PhD student, Igor Chernyuk, as well collaborators and finding agencies, especially Swiss National Science Foundation for continued support over the years. So our group had invented fundamentally new type of perovskite nanocrystals in the last years, which are bright SATs as illustrated here, just after the synthesis without any necessity for electronic surface perceivation, which is really needed for conventional quantum dots such as cadmium selenide or indium phosphide. So uh, these materials are known as perovskite lead halide and the slides represent the state of the art of these particles. So the emission covers entire visible spectral range up to near infrared wavelengths of 800 nanometers. So the emission usually very narrow, less than 100 milliEV, and their photoluminescent quantum yield usually very high up to 100%. And again, let me remind you that everything, all these uh, features are achieved without any electronic surface perceivation, without any uh, shell growth. So now, uh, besides all these uh, nice optical properties, such particles are very monodispersed. So now we are equipped with uh, monodispersed and shape regular nanocrystals. And our next goal was to make a long range ordered assembly out of these particles, so out of perovskite nanocrystals. And in this context, let me give you a short introduction to this field. So the first example of uh, uh, nanocrystal super lattices for conventional quantum dots had been reported back in the 90s. So they can be two-dimensional self-assembly or three-dimensional, and they form simply as a result of solvent evaporation from the colloidal solution. So importantly is that such super lattices adopt the most packed dense structures, which are either a hexagonal array in two dimension or FCC or ACP lattices in three dimensions. So all these structures are um, usually formed by uh, sterically stabilized nanocrystals. And this is the case of the majority of nanocrystals. So here you have inorganic core with hydrocarbon ligands on the surface as a ligand coating in a good solvent, for example, toluene. And um, uh, in such solvent, there is a negative free energy. Uh, for the uh, chain ligand uh, chain solvent mixing. The four when such particles approach each other, their brushes repels because they prefer to be mixed with a solvent molecule. And such steric repulsion is a short range interaction. The four in principle, we can call our particles hard spheres. And uh, the self-assembly uh, of higher spheres can be explained um, by the entropy gain. And it sounds strange and counterintuitive because how uh, can the order increase the entropy? But it actually does. Uh, what happened is that at very late stage of the drying, when particles compete for the remaining space, they will turn themselves into the ordered state to optimally use this remaining states for their um, vibrations and rotations, even if this leads to the decrease of configurational entropy. So in principle, we have small increase in entropy, which is really, really important factor uh, when there is no other stronger uh, forces. So in case of single component, in case of spheres, so we should end up with face-centered cubic or hexagonal closed packing because these structures are the most dense packed. So in case of perovskite nanocubes, the situation is even simple because such monodispersed particles can easily pack into the simple cubic lattice during the evaporation of the solvent from the colloidal solution. And here you can see an optical image of such uh, super lattices made of perovskite nanocubes. And if you look closer to them at ACM or at TM, you can clearly see that such super cubes are built from the million of uh, nanocubes, which are very monodispersed and even crystallographically aligned. And such structural order facilitate observation of collective phenomena. So when the luminescent particles packed in this way, they fluoresce um, uh, collectively. 
So, of course, uh, there are some special requirements for that, for instance, long optical coherent time, structural arrangement, and perhaps some other reasons as well. So, observed emission, which are called superfluorescence, are bursts of coherent photons, which emits faster due to the coupling as compared to uncoupled dots. So, this is the first time that semiconductor nanocrystal superlattices give rise to new properties and not only to beautiful TM or ACM images. Skype nanocrystal. And here uh, we go back again to the history. Uh, so this paper in 2003 impressed us a lot because lattices that we know from textbooks as uh, atomic or ionic crystals now can be made of nanocrystals. So in this paper, uh, the group of Chris Murray uh, mixed two different uh, sizes of spherical nanocrystals and they end up with such beautiful lattices. And experimentally, they prepare these lattices in a similar way as we are making our single component perovskite super lattices. So later on, the library of binary nanocrystal super lattices made of spherical particles had been extended by the same group or others. Here you can see 10 examples of such binary lattices, more you can find in the literature. So in such lattices we can combine metallic, semiconductor, magnetic nanocrystals, etc. So all of them are is a structural with very well known uh, ionic, atomic or intermetallic compounds. And they can be as simple as sodium chloride or as complicated as the sodium zinc sotin, where here unicell contains more than 100 atoms. So then we ask ourselves again, okay, can we um, use a cubical shaped particles and construct perhaps even greater structural variety or new structures so can we uh, make something multi-components where uh, one component uh, is a perovskite nanocrystals and perovskite nanocrystals are really good candidates because they have very sharp uh, shape. It sounds trivial, trivial and simple, but if you dig into the literature, you will barely find the examples of 10 nanometer or less sharp nanocubes. So for our experiments, we also choose DDBS ligand. It's D dibetyl dimethyl ammonium bromide because it's the shortest ligand that we can use in order to make perovskite particles still stable, processable, and robust. But what I have to mention is uh, that um, real nanocrystals are not ideal hard spheres as in micro-sized silica particles because they have this ligand shell on the surface. And the four nanocrystals can be characterized by softness, which is the ratio between the ligand extent and the size of the rigid core. So large particles are less soft and small particles are more soft. So we start to play with this two sizes by combining them with the spherical nanocrystals of different sizes and from different materials. So let's start from the simple lattice, which is sodium chloride type of the lattice. So for the all spherical systems, packing density of the lattice is a function of size ratio between the small and the large uh, sphere. So when we increase the size of small sphere, the packing density of sodium chloride lattice will increase. And when spheres get pushed from each other, the packing density of sodium chloride lattice decreases. So such lattice has been uh, observed in uh, all spherical nanocrystal systems and in hard, sy hard sphere systems as well. Therefore, it was first one that we thought about. So now if we think about cubes, uh, and these cubes um, uh, have the same edge length as the diameter of these uh, small blue spheres. So it means that they have a larger volume and this should lead to the higher packing density of the lattice. And again, it's true for entire uh, size ratio range. So uh, in principle, you should expect higher probability to form a sodium chloride type of the lattice for the mixture of spheres and cubes. And indeed, we check all these uh, size ratios. And for all the systems, we observe formation of sodium chloride type superlattice. So here are two examples of such sodium chloride type lattice where we combine nanocubes of perovskite and nanospheres of iron oxide. We test the two different size ratios. And for both, we observe formation of sodium chloride type 
uh, supervised. So, and we also recognize that these perovskite nanocubes are very well oriented in such plates. So, basically, they are uh, oriented as illustrated on this drawing. So before I go to a more complex structure, I would like to talk more about ligands because they are very, very important uh, players. So one of the important properties of the ligands on the nanocrystal surface is deformability. So it means that ligands can distort themselves at the nanocrystal uh, surface. And over the last several years, Dmitry Talapin and Alex Traveser did experimental and theoretical studies on the mixture of uh, spherical nanocrystals in order to explain formation of some binary nanocrystal uh, super lattices by the fact that ligands can deform and this can make a lattice a little densely uh, packed. So let's look at this example. This is a lattice as a structure of this uh, lithium bismuth alloy. And in hard sphere approximation, this lattice has quite low packing uh, density. But if we now take into account the ligand deformation along the line which connects this uh, to a sphere, we should end up uh, with, in principle, with a higher uh, packing uh, density. Because the material, which is in our case uh, inorganic core and ligands, occupy uh, more uh, volume. So, in the following discussion, I would refer to this OTM. A model developed by Alex Traveset. And this model originates uh, from the mathematical description of the vertices formed during the deformation of the ligands. So uh, from chemistry point of view, you would expect following. So when sphere is in a, low in a high coordination number environmental, there is no space for ligands to deform. But when sphere is in a low coordination number environmental, ligands can easily deform, reduce the distance between uh, spheres, and increase the packing density of the systems. So now, uh, what if we have a, a cubical nanocrystals as one of the uh, super lattice components? So imagine two cubes approaching each other with their corners or edges. And in those locations around these vertices and edges, we would expect even high degree of uh, ligand deformation. So this OTM model uh, becomes even more relative. And this what was the, our intuition to the words that I would discuss uh, further. So let's talk about this type of the lattice. We again start with sphere-sphere mixtures. And in the literature, you can find that this is nickel for n type of the lattice. But in principle, you can imagine this lattice as one derived from the perovskite type of the lattice. But here, spheres on the facets and inside of the unit cell are identical. It's B and O size. So we can call it, this is ABO3 prototype. So this lattice has never been observed in a mixture of spherical nanocrystals on, on the mixture of hard spheres, because you can see that it has quite low packing density and it cannot compete with FCC lattice of single component super lattice. So if now we switch to cubes, we will immediately end up with a size ratio range when, where packing density exceeds the packing density of FCC lattice. And even more, if we take into account the ligands deformation, such ABO3 uh, structure will form for larger size ratios. So exactly this OTM branch arise from the uh, fact that ligands can deform when the sharp side of the cube impinges the ligand shell of the sphere. So we tested all these systems for uh, all the size ratios for the optimal packing density for ABO3 structure. And we observe for the first time in the mixture of sterically stabilized nanocrystals, perovskite type super lattice. So the probability to form such lattice is really high. Uh, we can have this lattice with very high yield, with large domains. Uh, with high uh, degree of orientation and this high degree of orientation, um, uh, with a high degree orientational order of these cubes. So these nanocubes of perovskites are basically oriented as illustrated on this drawing. So it means that cubes inside of the unit cell and on the facets are oriented differently. So the form we are 
And we no longer speak of a nickel for N type of the lattice. We can start to speak about truly perovskite type of the lattice because geometrically these cubes are not identical. But of course, um, compositionally, it's still binary uh, super lattice. So of course, we were uh, very interested to see the optical properties from such structures and sign of collective emission and qualitatively we observe uh, exactly the same behavior as before all these typical characteristics like red shifted emission band uh, accelerated radiative rates at high affluences and these characteristics oscillations at high affluences um, in the time domain which is needed to establish coherence before um, uh, emission burst. So all, uh, everything as before. So uh, we wanted, of course, to make a truly ternary perovskite type super lattice when each side is occupied with a different nanocrystal. And in principle, it's possible because at some size ratios, the space available inside of the unit cell is larger than space available for cubes on the facets. And we can take a larger cubes and expect that such cubes deterministically will go to the center of unit cell. What we did, we choose let's cell fight nanocubes. They are not so uh, sharp as perovskite nanocubes, but good enough to prove the principle. We mix such lead sulfide nanocubes with nanocubes of perovskite and nanospheres iron oxide. And indeed, such lead sulfide nanocubes uh, localize themselves in the unicell um, uh, of the perovskite lattice. So finally, we have truly ternary perovskite type super lattice. So now I would like you to show what else is uh, available beyond the uh, structural space with a uh, uh, spherical nanocrystals. So let's look at this lattice, which is made with spheres and disks. In the nanoparticle world, this structure had been attempted. We tried as well, but without success. And it's not a surprise because if you look at the, if we compute the packing density of this lattice, we can clearly see that this is low packed uh, structure. But now if we switch to cubes, we will immediately end up with the, even in hard sphere approximation with the packing density, which is much uh, higher um, than packing density for the mixture of disk and spheres. And even more, if you take into account the ligands deformation, this is without, this is with taken into account. And here you see the sharp edge of the cube in pinch, the ligand shell of the sphere. And this OTM branch exactly arise from the fact that ligands can uh, deform. And we obtain even higher packing density for such lattices. So experimentally, we observe all these lattices by combining small perovskite nanocubes with a large Montano fluoride monodispersed nanodisc. All these lattices are columnar assemblies and none of the structures had been previously observed for the disc uh, sphere mixtures. So, and for all these lattices that we observed, um, a hard sphere approximation tell us, even without taking into account the ligands deformation, that such structures should have a, a higher packing density as compared to packing density for same structures, but made of disks and spheres. So we played further with uh, sizes of our uh, components. We used the largest azelaid bromide particles and smaller lantano fluoride disc. And we end up, for example, with sodium chloride type of the lattice, like illustrated here, which one side of the lattice is occupied with the clusters of lantano fluoride uh, disc, <laughs> which has yeah, it's my last slide, okay. uh, which has um, the same size as uh, this nanocube, or we end up with such structure where the small lantano fluoride is interlay cubes, so packing density of such structure should be uh, even higher. 
So what we learn from this work that as you switch to the um, uh, shape control of the building blocks with a high uniformity and control so uh, softness, you could expect a structure that uh, you have never observed in the mixtures of spherical nanocrystals. And with this, I would like to finish with my presentation and thank you for your attention.